Good day. Welcome to my presentation on building foundation instability induced by tsunami scour. The presentation outline is as follows. I will start by highlighting the motivation of the research and key objectives. I will go in depth into the tsunami induced scour occurrence on buildings, building foundation instability due to tsunami induced scour, failure modes, summary of observations of failure and general tsunami conditions, analysis and forecasting of building foundation failure, conclusion, future study, and acknowledgements. I was motivated by the fact that the damages on building foundations cause foundation instability due to tsunami loading and effects. The emphasis of the research was to investigate building foundation instability caused by tsunami-induced scour, and there were not many risk assessing mechanisms for identifying vulnerable buildings prone to foundation failure due to induced tsunami scour. The key objectives of the research was to highlight and identify failure modes of building foundation from post-tsunami surveys and also to incorporate the use of Nicholas et al. 2016 predictive scour model to forecast and risk assess existing and proposed designs of building foundations susceptible to tsunami-induced scour. I will now give an overview of how tsunami-induced scour occurs around buildings. In general, structures can develop scour near the edge of the structure. It is observed that building scour usually occurs at the edge of the building facing the seaward side. The scour depth is affected by the tsunami wave, geometric properties of the building, and shear stress. A majority of scour images show that scour occurred at the edge of buildings toward the seaward face. A foundation structure is considered as a flow obstacle and influence the erosion of scour around a foundation. The change in flow patterns increases the bed shear stress and the turbulence level. Those parameters near the structure increases the sediment transport in the vicinity of the structure. All this can be seen in the image below. A 2.5 meter scour hole occurs toward the seaward end of the building. A building foundation can be undermined due to local scour at the corner of the building. Tsunami-induced scour near the foundation allows for exposure of foundations to increase lateral inundation loads, causing the building to overturn. Scour around buildings can result in decreased embedment of a building foundation into the soil, causing shallow foundations to collapse, deep foundations to be more susceptible to settlement, lateral movement, or overturning from lateral loads. The image below shows an overturned building due to the aforementioned process. The unbraced length of PAL foundations increases due to scour around building corners, which result in increased bending moments and as a result, overstress piles. When a tsunami wave acts on a building, a strong flow is generated around the corners of the building, resulting in scour. Failure modes such as tilting of the building can occur. The diagram seen illustrates the process of tsunami-induced scour. The bearing capacity is reduced due to decreased soil, causing less contact pressure between the soil and the foundation, resulting in failure. The failure modes can be observed in images A to D. They all represent tilting of foundations. The failure mode gradually progresses from tilting to rotation and finally to collapse as seen in images A to C. Scour and foundation depths 
measured along the stretch of the damaged coastal marine buildings were used for the analysis. The diagram shows the process of tsunami scour and bearing failure causing tilting or undermining. The data as seen in the graph was taken from the 2004 Sumatra tsunami event and the 2011 Great East Japan earthquake and tsunami. The samples highlights failure modes observed in in situ. A risk matrix and associated equations were developed to help visualize and predetermine building foundations which are likely to experience failure in the event of a tsunami. This risk matrix can be used to manage risk and also used as a soft approach to help identify suitable mitigation. Data indicates that during a tsunami event, a variety of foundations are affected. However, shallow foundations experience major failure. Buildings with a range of use such as residential buildings, hotels, public buildings, industrial facilities, and critical infrastructure can be affected by a tsunami event and subsequent tsunami-induced scour and then foundation failure. Hence, it is imperative to classify the risk of buildings using risk matrix such as the proposed to assist in potential identification and mitigation of high-risk buildings. Key variables for forecasting building foundation failure can be used. This includes the identification of location of a building, the expected tsunami conditions, soil parameters, and geometric properties, i.e. the foundation depth, building geometry, using pre a predictive model such as Nicholas et al. to predetermine scour depth, the above information is then used, the calculated depth from the above process and the existing or design foundation depths are then incorporated into the equation below to determine the likelihood of failure. The image seen represents the process of forecasting building foundation failure. The highlighted equation represents Nicholas et al. 2016 Tsunami Scour Predictive Model. The predictive model can be used within the risk metric ratio to predetermine the risk output of either an existing or a design building foundation. In equation 1, the state of no failure occurs when the ratio of the foundation depth and the induced tsunami scour depth is greater than 1. In equation 2, a state of failure occurs when the ratio of the foundation depth and the tsunami induced scour depth is less than 1. The final output can be placed onto the risk matrix and the risk visually observed. Buildings classed as high risk will lie within the red zone, while buildings classed as low risk will lie within the green zone. There are several mitigation techniques and recommendations. Deep foundations, especially deep slab foundations, are recommended. These foundations are preferred than piles foundation, as this is seen as a hard approach to mitigate the issue of tsunami-induced scour and its eventual foundation failure. PAL foundations can place complications due to soil liquefaction, washing away soil. This loss of soil can result in loss of skin friction of the pile or pile group, resulting in reduced pile resistance, causing buildings to overturn during the tsunami event. Hence, deep slab foundations are preferred to piles. Soft approaches such as the risk matrix can be used to identify vulnerable foundation structures and determine adequate mitigation techniques. 
Other approaches, such as changing the surface roughness or composition on top of the foundation and also allowing for smaller seaward side lengths, can help to reduce scour and its impacts. In conclusion, the process of tsunami scour can lead to major bearing capacity failure of building foundations due to less contact pressure between the soil and the foundation. Undermining of foundations result in tilting leading to rotation and then to total collapse or displacement of the building and its foundation. The most common failure mode observed for shallow foundations due to tsunami-induced scour was general undermining and tilting. This failure mode was observed both in the 2004 and 2011 tsunami events. The proposed predictive scour model can be used to help analyze the risk of foundation failure of existing or designed foundations. The relative risk metric incorporates the use of Nicholas et al. predictive model and building geometry. Our future studies will be to carry out more analysis of surveyed buildings from post-tsunami surveys to ascertain whether the observed failure correlates with the failure expected and the risk incurred, and to identify existing buildings susceptible to risk of foundation failure along a coastal belt prone to tsunamis. The acknowledgments are for as follows, J. Murphy and Sons, Waseda University, Yokohama National University, and University of East London.